Um, hey guys, so, um, today, I don't know what I need to do with video, so, I'm going to do, <coughs> make a practice of my book report project for tomorrow. I did Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson for a book that was pretty cool. I actually really liked that book, so, basically, yeah. So, the first card. I have to have this memorized. Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple, the founder of Next, and the CEO of Pixar, was more than just smart. He was a genius. He was born February 24, 1955, and adopted by um and adopted by high school dropouts. Even though his um birth mother didn't um want him to. Um he they adopted a sister and he also had a biological sister. He was smarter than his parents and that led to him being a prankster and being, and having to receive bribes to do his work. In fourth grade he tested at the high school sophomore level and had to skip to sixth grade instead of going to fifth grade. But that was a new school so he was kind of like an outcast. Um, he ended up meeting Steve Wozniak in high school, and they, um, they were very similar, they worked together really well, and they both worked at HP and Atari for a while, and they, together, they started Apple. The Apple One was basically just fully assembled circuit boards that people could use. They were built in 30 days in 1976. The Apple II in 1977 um, was the first launch event for the company that um, they showed off the product and everything in front of a bunch of people. And that made Apple seem like a real company. And they had 12 employees. It was cool. It had um, like a monitor, plus and keyboard, and it sold over six million in sixteen years. Um, in nineteen eighty-three, the Lisa computer was Lisa was released, and they got. The graphic user interface ideas from Xerox Park. Um, it had a really powerful microprocessor compared to the Apple II, and it did a lot better after the Apple III in 1980, which really didn't work out at all. The Lisa computer was actually named after his first daughter, Lisa Brennan Jobs, but he, and because like he felt bad because. Um, he didn't, like, accept her as his own. Um, in 1984, the Mac was released, and it had a special advertising camp camp campaign that said, you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. This is because the music, 19 the movie, 1984, was, um, like, it was created after a movie with, like, computer screens, the Big Brother is what it was called, that were controlling a bunch of like human droids and everything, so this caught celebrities' attention. He got kicked out of Apple in, in 1987 or 88, and so he launched his own computer company called Next, and IBM was impressed by the software. What was that card? Um, after next, he bought Pixar and became the CEO of Pixar. And um, animation had been like a sideline thing. And John Lasseter was the head of that of animation. He loved Disney, so he did animated shorts like Luxo Jr. and Tin Toy. And it turned out that Disney really liked his shorts, but um, Lasseter didn't want to leave Disney, Pixar, which gave Disney and Pixar like a deal together. In 
all of this between Pixar and Disney's first deal and everything. Um, he got married to Lorraine Powell in 1991, and he had three kids, Reed, Aaron, and Eve, in 1991, 95, and 98. In Toy Story was in production from 1993 to 1995. They had to scrap about half the movie because um, the main character, Woody, ended up being really mean. So, and they didn't want that because it was going to be a kid's movie, so they fixed it. In 1995, it was released in November with a $30 million opening, and it was the top grossing film of 1995. Apple wasn't doing as well as when it had been Jobs' company, so he regained control over it, and but not as a CEO, as just an advisor. And he was really happy at Pixar, which is why he didn't become a full CEO again. In 1997, he became the interim CEO, or the ICEO. He received no salary and no contract, but he was still in charge of the company. And this led to the Think Different ad campaign in 97, which led to the iMac, the desktop for the home, which was really unique because it had colorful casing around it and everything. So then, since they wanted ways to display the way the iMovie and all these things worked on the Mac, they constructed Apple stores. In 2001, the one in Tyson's Corner opened, and it was like all glass. Wood, stone, steel, and glass is what they were described as. Um, music started becoming of a different thing. So, he wanted a way for everyone to gain access to music without pirating it like downloading it illegally, so he created iTunes and the iPod. iTunes started out at 99 cents, it was really cheap. The iPod started at $399, so it wasn't as cheap, but the problem was that iTunes was only for Mac, which drove the sales up of the Macintosh, but that was inconvenient for Windows users, so they started um, making knockoffs of it, and they were kind of bad, like the Zoom and the Rio, which they weren't as good. So, the record, they needed a way to do it for Windows, but the record companies were kind of on the fence because it was like redoing a deal that they had already done. They weren't so sure about that. But it ended up working out, so that led to 2004 the iPod Mini being released, and in January 2005 the iPod Shuffle was released. In the first year, iTunes sold 70 million songs, and in 2006 they hit 1 billion, which it was about 5 years. People often ask Jobs what was on his iPod, and Bob Dylan and the Beatles are what he mostly listened to. This, um, having the Beatles on iTunes was kind of like a big thing because they had kind of like a copyright infringement, like, mess up thing because the Beatles recording company was called Apple as well, so they kind of had you know, something about that. And then, I'm not done writing all my cards out. In 1999, Toy Story was released, which, so, they wanted, like, a special Apple building to be constructed, so the Pixar building became, like, Steve Jobs' own, like, movie building. I didn't need cards, you know. Yeah, it was, like, his own movie, basically. I'm gonna just write the cards out while I'm saying it, it'll be a lot easier for me to do it. Okay, card number 22 would be Goat. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Disney was doing really well with Pixar. And Pixar thought it could be more independent, I think. So, Disney was kind of like jealous of Pixar, like, how do you do that? And so, it was making Disney do really well. And so, their deal was coming up for like, they wanted to keep the deal. And a lot of a lot of the Pixar things ended up beating Disney. Like um like Finding Nemo beat the Lion King and they were kind of like I don't know, but they were kind of like mad about it. So, Disney itself, it owned all the characters that Pixar had because of their deal, and they didn't really like that. But Disney could do, it could do a Toy Story 3 by itself if Disney wanted to. It could do a second Finding Nemo. And so, they wanted to cut off negotiations with Disney, basically. Like Disney, Disney wasn't really doing very well, and Pixar was helping it because it had an amazing animation department. 